Mayday, Mayday. This is a critical incident has occurred in ice-infested waters northeast of Svalbard. A cruise ship with 2,580 passengers on board has hit the ground and needs immediate assistance. A distress signal is received at Buda Radio and satellite communication established with the ship. Mayday, Arctic Viking LB X. This is Buda Radio received Mayday. Based on the brief info from the captain, the Norwegian Rescue Control Center immediately mobilizes the National Catastrophic Response Team. Military and civil planes, vessels and helicopters with pre-packed emergency response equipment, paramedics and specialist Arctic response personnel are being mobilized. The remote Arctic conditions with limited infrastructure requires airdrops of rescue personnel and equipment and possible shelter on ice. Buda Radio is calling all ships in the area for immediate assistance. fighter jets are scrambled from the closest Norwegian military base, with estimated time of arrival at Arctic Viking 75 minutes after the incident. Two rescue helicopters from Longyearbyen with personnel and equipment are the first on the ground, approximately one and a half hours after the incident. An Orion surveillance aircraft departs from Andoya to act as air traffic control in the area. Two Hercules cargo planes are loaded with pre-packed emergency rescue and medical equipment and specialist Arctic trained rescue personnel which will be airdropped nearby the grounded ship. Another two helicopters are mobilized from the mainland and flies via Longyearbyen for refueling. The Coast Guard helicopter flies across Falbart to take part in the rescue operation. First pictures from the scene is then transferred to the rescue control center. The F-35 fighter plans provides airdrop of SAR observation pods on ice flows and onshore around the grounded ship. These surveillance cameras are attached to helium balloons and provide the rescue control center with real-time infrared overview from the area. The F-35 also establishes the location for airdrops and a suitable area for establishing shelter on ice. A chartered civilian medical aircraft takes off from Gautamoen and additional aircraft departs from Boda to assist with evacuation of injured and non-injured personnel. The rescue control center communicates directly as the first rescue helicopter arrives at the Arctic Viking. SAR personnel and a medical doctor are immediately launched onto Arctic Viking. Most of the personnel are still on board the ship, which is considered stable. SAR-1 rescue personnel immediately establishes a provisional tent camp on a nearby ice area for medical treatment and caretaking of personnel rescued from the water or life rafts. Every passenger is equipped with armbands which are activated in contact with salt water or by reduction in individual's body temperature. SAR helicopters and drones will immediately receive key information of individuals, which improves the effectiveness of the rescue operation. Life rafts with personnel are lifted out of the water and onto the ice, where they are taken care of by medical personnel. fly zone for civilian aircraft is established with vertical separation for all SAR aircraft activities.
massive airdrops of personnel and equipment from the Hercules includes a wide range of medical treatment, communication, and emergency rescue equipment. A large tent camp, Frontline Hospital, is established where the personnel will be registered and categorized for emergency evacuation to Long Air BN, medical treatment or on-site caretaking. Remote healthcare facilities are being set up, which provides for online support and assistance from specialists at the University Hospital in Tromsø. The rescue vehicles, RIBS, are launching larger life rafts for bringing personnel from Arctic Viking and into the ice edge where inflatable evacuation slides have been mounted at the ice edge for easier evacuation from the sea level and up to the emergency shelter tent camp on ice. Evacuating roughly 150 people every 15 minutes into safety. The first rescue ship has arrived and is preparing to support the still ongoing SAR operation. The situation is stabilized and there is no longer a critical risk for lives. For the operators at the Rescue Control Center, it is time to move to the next phase. The immediate response and the different team's preparedness, combined with clear weather, has turned what could have been an enormous civilian catastrophe to a successful evacuation. Now we have to report that the potential catastrophic outcome of the search and rescue mission has been failed. Sarinor. Search and Rescue in the High North.